Today with me, the Leader of the House, Anthony Albanese, and the Shadow Environment Minister, Greg Hunt, both with me here in the Canberra studio. Gentlemen, before we get started, I want to play you a comment that Tony Windsor has said this morning uh, about the nature of the debate around the carbon tax, and then I'll get your response to it. I think uh, th this uh, sort of nonsense debate we're having on climate change at the moment, or we're not having on climate change debate, the shock jocks and others uh, are involved in an orchestrated campaign here over the issue itself, but particularly uh, target, targeting members of parliament that uh, uh, want to be involved in the substantive debate. So I think if they keep running that line, they may well have a self-fulfilling pro prophecy that uh, they will incite people to do things that they wouldn't normally do. Anthony Albanese, first to you. Don't politicians get these sorts of threats on a regular basis? Uh, Tony Windsor said he's received some death threats, but uh, is that par for the course in some respects? Well, no, and thank goodness in Australia it's not. Um, whilst we get... You don't get uh, random sort of uh, calls from time to time? Look, uh, certainly uh, I have had over it's, uh, 15 years to the day since I was elected to Parliament. Uh, in all that time, I've had uh, two or three incidents, but that's all. It's certainly not. One of the great things about Australia is that uh, whatever our, our differences uh, in general, uh, discourse is better here than it is uh, somewhere like the United States. Are you worried the language has been too harsh? Certainly, I think there's, there's been a change, uh, particularly listening to Tony's comments, in the way that commentators... Uh, broadcast their views. There are, is I think, uh, has been a, a ramp up of uh, of the polemic. Um, I think um, whatever uh, people might uh, think of uh, of the prime minister's uh, views on the issue, I do think that some of the uh, the discourtesy uh, shown towards the elected prime minister by some of the uh, the, the talkback. Uh, radio commentators uh, last week, I think, was, you know, not not really appropriate. I think it is important that we keep a civil discourse in this country, and that's really all that Tony Windsor's saying. And I think it's appropriate that it be said. Well, Tony Windsor's gone a, a little bit further than that. Uh, well, Greg Hunt, I'll bring him in, in, into the conversation. He says that things could could go too far. Even even mentioning uh, recent violence in the United States with Gabrielle Giffords, the congresswoman, was shot there. So he's suggesting that that sort of thing might eventuate unless the language is toned down. Well, firstly, I think, uh, fortunately, we have probably the best and arguably one of the most civilised democracies in the world. Uh, the United States comparison, I don't think, is uh, a direction we're heading. And uh, I say that with great respect to both sides of Parliament. Uh, I think that uh, it can be tough and robust, but we know where to draw the line. Uh, we all get... Uh, abuse, uh, and uh, only um, a couple of weeks ago, our my office was uh, uh, attacked by somebody with human feces. Now that was reported; it was dealt with. You don't uh, get out of hand. You don't get carried away. That's unfortunate. Uh, but I think we all have to be civilised towards each other and show respect for the position that the people have elected a Member of Parliament, even if you disagree with them. What about some of the commentary then, outside of the Parliament? You say that the, the discourse within Parliament you're comfortable with. What about that outside of it, which, uh, which Mr Windsor and, and, uh, and Anthony Albanese have just referred to? Well, none of us should be afraid of tough and robust debate, because these are issues about the future of uh, Australian families and their costs and their impacts. Uh, but uh, similarly, all of us uh, need to be uh, respectful of decency in the way in which we deal. And that means radio commentators uh, on the left, on the right, uh, in the centre. Uh, and so we all need to abide by the, the basic rules of uh, decency. I spoke to Greg Combe earlier in the morning and asked his view on this. Let's see what he had to say. I've noticed, uh, uh, of course, in the reports what he's been subjected to, and I'm certainly sorry to hear that, uh, but I don't think it's appropriate, really, to be commenting on security matters. Uh, you know, there's, there's, yes, there's a lot of vigour in this debate, but what we've really got to do is just <coughs> approach it in a calm, rational, reasonable manner. This is a public policy issue. Is it, it is an important one, and, of course, people have got firm views about it. 
Uh, however, anything like this, particularly a policy issue as important as this, we've got a responsibility, all of us, including the wider community, to just look at the issues calmly and rationally. Greg Hunt, uh, earlier you spoke about the, you know this being a debate about the, the tax and the, the hit to people's uh, cost of living and so on. But isn't isn't the passion at the centre of this debate about the very nature of climate change and whether or not it exists or it doesn't? Isn't that where all the fire is built up by people who don't believe it on one hand and those that are fierce advocate, advocates of the, the science on the other? No, I couldn't uh, disagree more with great respect. Uh, this is a debate not about science... Uh, or climate or targets. Uh, the government wants that to be the topic. It is a debate solely, solely, as Tony Abbott made absolutely clear on the floor of the House uh, in Parliament yesterday, about two, di two different mechanisms. One, which is about a starting price of $300 a year of electricity tax and six and a half cents per litre of petrol tax. And the other one, which is about doing real things immediately uh, and I know that uh, Anthony's about to uh, replay the dodgy document of a year ago, so um, uh, good luck to him on that. But it's a debate about mechanisms, not about science and action. Well, the government has uh, released advice. I'll, I'll come to the Minister now and then get your response to it, because we heard from Greg Tombay before that um, with this... This uh, climate change, Department of Climate Change advice that says there's a $30 billion black hole in the, the coalition's direct action plan and, importantly, in the face of this cost of living argument that you've been the, the subject to, you're saying that consumers are actually going to be worse off, that ha households will be worse off under the direct action plan. They will be, of course. Uh, the opposition would like you to believe that somehow you can spend money through their so-called direct action plan.